Don't be that way. Like, turn off your microphone and then <laughs> make quiet. I believe we're we're live. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to start by saying welcome, everybody, and just to let you know again, we are currently live on YouTube, uh, straight to YouTube live streaming. Um, we are also going to be. Um, <clears throat> excuse me we're also going to be uh taking screenshots sharing some love on social media instagram linkedin all of that stuff and also um if you don't want to be on camera that's fine please turn your camera off please turn your mic off if you don't want to be heard but we'd love to see your faces because you know we'd like to see the people that we're we're talking to and we're facilitating with um so and for those who have joined wednesday web jam for the first time welcome this is a space for clumsy innovators, compassionate facilitators, broad-minded design thinkers, cheeky creator, cheeky co-creators, ignorant experimentalists, hungry hungry learners, sorry, change makers, and we're very, very, very open-minded. And our motto is failing forward. We're failing forward. There is no other way. So also please remember some ground rules to be kind, be nice, be empathetic and fail forward with us. So today's session, I would like to kindly present, we have all these lovely facilitators. We have Lee Kim, Misha, Dina, Colin, Sarah, uh, Andrew, Caitlin and myself, who will be facilitating today's memory kaleidoscope game. So I'd like to um, get Lee Kim to do a bit of an introduction. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mim. Um, so this is dream come true when you are thinking about doing a memory kaleidoscope and you can actually put people, as you said, PK, um, people to create the storytelling game with you, but as the collectives, right? So amazing experience to be here. I've been here before and love it. Uh, always cannot make it, but today is going to be a fun day. Um, memory Kaleidoscope was first introduced in 2019 because there was uh, a call for, for action. Uh, I live in New York City and uh, Queens is one of the most diverse neighborhood in New York City. And probably that means a lot to a lot of us. And they actually um, have a library and the library, uh, a person asked uh, one of us who are in design space to create a game create a game that does not require a verbal prompt. So, you know, if I ask you like, tell me a time where you had most struggles or tell me a time that you um, wants to forget about, then we will tell a story. But how can we prompt a memory or a story that does not have a verbal prompt? And so we searched far and wide and we came up with an idea of using paintings. Paintings that's available for all of us because um, from 2017 or so, a lot of museums begin to issue Creative Commons license for the collections that they have. So initially, we used about uh, 45, we selected 45 paintings uh, from many different museums and used that as a prompt to tell our stories, our memories. And because of that, we sometimes do not know what memories will be prompted by looking at this is, um, images. So as you are playing the game and you will be put it into a breakout room, some memories you might not know that you had. You have tucked away for so long that you didn't know that you had it. Um, please know that we are in a safe space. So as a storyteller, feel free to share the story that you feel comfortable sharing. As a story listener, you don't have to solve anything. You know, they are not sharing the story so that you can solve the problems. They are sharing the story because they feel comfortable with you. So as they share laughters, tears, whatever that comes to, um, just be there to listen. But you will be also given an opportunity to ask questions, to learn more about the person behind the story. And our facilitators will guide you through that as well. Um, so as the pandemic hit and we could no longer meet in person and play this game in person, we moved on to the virtual. Um, and that allowed us to actually create more paintings. <laughs> so instead of having 45, um, we were able to tap into many different museums from, um, from Chicago, 
to New York to somewhere in Cleveland. So we have about 160 or so um, paintings available for you to choose from. You don't know what you're gonna choose because that's the fun of the game. Um, but hopefully in the end, you will come, out, come away with understanding each other through the stories and also by sharing your own stories with others. So uh, we will be put into breakout room for about 35 minutes. And we have amazing facilitators, Minpu just shared, but I'm gonna also share my screen because, um, <laughs> because we'd like to share. So here is me, uh, there is Colin, Dina, Caitlin, Misha, Sarah, Mimp, and Andrew, and you will be paired with one of them. So thank you so much for the facilitators to you know, prepare this and then also be willing to steer the ship the way that it wants to go. Um, so Mimp, if you can just put people into the breakout room, you're gonna have about 35 minutes in the breakout room and we're gonna come back and share some more with the broader group as well. I'm still uh, putting people in breakout okay. rooms, so. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just share some of the things. Um, so these are the paintings. You might not see it all, but I'm gonna just like kind of like um, share this. They are from Art Institute of Chicago, Barnes Foundation, the Cleveland Museum of Art, Los Angeles County Museum of Art, uh, Met Museum, and Yale Center for British Art. And I'm sure if you are from another country, maybe you want to explore your own country's uh, painting collections and see what is available for you to use. Um, that will be a fun exercise with Nipte. Still putting people in breakout rooms, sorry. Okay. Nilita, Nilita, Nilita. And after you play the game, if you want to have your own memory kaleidoscope board, um, you can always reach out to me and I'll create one for you individually and you can, you can have your own. <laughs> That sounds like a present. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sign up with you, Likim. Yeah. <laughs> the more, the better. <laughs> so, one second. Just double checking if I have everybody in the right spaces. Yes. So, um, we have about four to six people uh, okay. in a breakout room. And... Uh, Anupa, Fika, Lee Kim, Kimena, and Yunyun, please stay in the main room. And I will open the breakout rooms now for um, 35 minutes. Could yeah. We? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. And I will see you all very soon. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> They're gone. <laughs> yeah. So being being obnoxious today, I'm gonna ask for the rules of how to behave again. <laughs> Follow your classmate. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I think we can now. Um, hi, Ola. Glad that you can make it. So I'm going to now start playing the game. So as I mentioned, um, the game will be played in, in a way that each person actually plays a couple of roles. Um, you will be a storyteller, you will be a story listener, and you will also be an inquirer. And in the end, hopefully we'll be able to see what kind of kaleidoscope that we cre created together. So I put the name, um, Ola here, Ike, Inyan, Anupa, Jimena, and Mim. Um, and I'm, oh, Ola disappeared. Ola so went to another put, room. <laughs> Ola is another room, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna like rotate it and then pull, pull a name and that person becomes a storyteller. Well, hopefully we'll have everyone being a storyteller. So, oh, look who it is. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All right. So I'm going to share my screen. And so, Mim, I'm going to allow you to think about a letter from A to H. Choose mm -hmm. a letter. I would like to choose an A. 
for a. any fur. <laughs> I'm gonna go to A. Yeah. And now I would like you to choose two numbers. I'd like to choose 13 and 15. 13 and 15. So I'm going to now move these two paintings to the images that was selected. And then uh, hopefully it will load up. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> All right. So now you have these two paintings. Which one of these prompt a memory for you? Uh, the first one where somebody is sewing. Okay. Yeah. Now, could you please share your memories with us? Oh, let me let me rethink one second. <laughs> Not rethink. Let me think about it. Uh, so it made me think of uh, when I was in primary school. One of the first like home economics that I had to learn. In I was in Thailand at the time. I was living in Thailand with my auntie. I remember like I have to learn how to sew at school and uh, we had to make like foldable uh, kind of like a kind of like a foldable pocket for our uh, spoons and forks to bring <laughs> to, to eat uh, for lunch. Not not the forks and spoon, but we're using that as, you know, utensils. So yeah. that made me think of that memory that I have to learn to sew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now that Mimpe has shared a little bit of her um, childhood memories with us, each one of us can ask her questions to learn more about her. And that could be anything, uh, but it has to have origin of her story. So for example, I could ask, um, since she mentioned about primary school in Thailand, I could ask questions like, can you tell me a little bit more about your primary school? Who was your best friend? Um, you know, what, what were the things that you still remember about your primary school? I see. So uh, it was a school where we have to learn three languages. So like uh, English is, uh, sorry, Thai is our first language. All the subjects are in Thai apart from English that, you know, we learn as a second language and Japanese is my third language. Some people chose Chinese, but I, I chose Japanese because smaller groups and much more fun. And uh, I I don't know if I have a best, best friend because I, I remember I didn't have a lot of like, uh, I didn't get along with every single person because they don't like somebody who stands out so much in the crowd and <laughs> too confident. So I, I'm only friends with like some people, but those people I'm still really good friends with. Like one of them, uh, he um, he got married recently and he announced on Valentine's Day that um, he's having a baby with his wife. And, and I was like, oh my God, he's now going to be a dad? Like, that is my reaction. Like, wow, like, oh, I'm, I'm at the age where I'm going to be an auntie now. That's so yeah. exciting. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that is what I remember from, from primary school. Thank you. And so now everyone, will ask a question about the story that she shared initially. And then now she has another memory that she had kind of expanded upon, right? Um, so anyone has, I mean, everyone will ask a question. So raise your hand to go first. Or we'll just do, um, okay, in the end. When you told about making a little pocket for for the, the the fork and so on to to put in there, what else, what what else, what kind of objects did you make in in, in primary school? Ah, uh, we made so in home economics or like outside of that. <laughs> In home economics okay so uh i remember we had to like uh learn how to uh, fix like a, a collar or like you know if if shirts are torn a little bit torn we have to learn how to fix that or um different techniques of how to like sew something there's like five different techniques or something i don't remember anymore but it, it's a very good skill that i learned in primary school and i still use it now if i <laughs> let's say if one of my buttons are like came off i can i know how to sew that i think i think yeah, and uh, and uh, we also need to learn how to like iron as well as like um doing a washing, and that's like actually graded. Like we have to get like buckets of water like to like next to our classroom and then do the washing like in front of our teachers, and our teachers have to assess like really? if, yeah, they have to assess like oh if this is a uh, if this is clean enough, if this is good technique, do you, are you doing the right steps? And and there's also one that I find really funny, but it, I I find it necessary now, which is like cleaning like the bathroom for example like they have to assess every single step and wow yeah I remember that and also uh making like making 
food like for example like making omelette like they they got us to uh think about like how to make omelette in like a different ways like you tie tie omelette which is like you add fish sauce and then there's like uh normal omelettes where you have like milk and some people add like parsley some people add like carrots in them and we came up with different recipes and that was that was really fun because we we, we get to eat like everybody's food <laughs> yeah that's what i remember <laughs> Anupa, do you have a question for Mimp? You're on mute. <laughs> uh, you know, when you said that uh, you didn't want to, you wanted to kind of, you know, um, just blend in. Yeah. And, um, and you just wanted to fit in, right? So, like, at that age, uh, it's quite a young age, right? Like, what, what made you think about such, like, big topics? big topics what do you mean like big topics you know like the things about like inclusiveness and you know because mm. uh, you know at, at normally at, at like children probably you know they are aware some can express some can't mm. so what made you feel like that and actually think about it now mm, I don't really like have the word inclusiveness in my head all I have is just basically I just want to be myself and I know that like if I have to blend to become another person like I tried before it's not like I haven't tried in primary school like I think we all had to find our ways to adapt you know because we're all humans we, we we live with other humans so I tried and I felt like I can't I, I I wasn't happy I felt like I was being somebody else that's that I think I was just focusing on like is this me am I happy am I not happy I, I was focusing on that a lot more than just like making everybody else happy because like if I'm not myself and I like had to make other people happy without being myself I don't want that I'd rather have no friends if if that's the case like (laughs) no like seriously like like I I had like I think it was like at the lunch table I remember I like I just sat in like on like a table by myself at some point like in in secondary school like it was the same school that I went to like the primary school and I remember like I'd rather sit by myself than not sit with like the people that was really um I don't want to use this word but I I I don't know what else like people who are like pretentious and faking how they feel about me I'm like no I I don't I don't like that I I want to I just want to be true to myself and if people like me for who I am why do I have to change my whole identity to fit in somebody else's perspective if you know what I mean wow yeah this took me 30 years to get there (laughs) (laughs) right it's a journey (laughs) yeah Yeah. oh thank you Vicky do you have a question for me uh yeah um uh, would you like to go back to your childhood or are you happy that it's past and you'll never Uh, that you never have to experience that time again I actually don't want to go back like if I want to go back I'd like to go back as like a as an observer in like you know like Harry Potter's um invisible cloak like I just want to go and see like what was it really like as a third person perspective for me Mm. um but I don't want to go back and change anything because like I if I didn't go through those experiences I wouldn't be who I am now and I feel like that those experiences made me even more authentically like myself and I moved to the UK and I found really good friends and I knew that like and also like I had friends outside of school so I knew that I wasn't the problem it was just the people some people that I happened to be in the same class with didn't like me and um it it shouldn't you know I I knew that like I wasn't the problem and let's just say I don't want to go back in that time to live to relive it but only as an observer because I'm I'm happy with what like where I am in life now and I'm just happy to just move forward but it doesn't mean that I don't go back and reflect my like you know what happened like what would like would I be happy like 10 years ago like me right now am I going to be happy with myself and all of that yeah Jimena, last question. <laughs> um, I'm thinking right now, which question? Sorry. Well, anything any anything that Mimp just to share the story, um, anything from what she shared, do you have any questions to learn more? I was partly here. Um, I think that if 
I'm not sure which question right now. Sorry. Can I go on the second okay. round? <laughs> yeah, second round. All right. So <laughs> now that Minpa shared her story, we're going to move this into the themes. Um, and if you can put it into the chat, why are some of the themes that came up in her story that we can go back and we remember? Um, so, you know, it can be, yeah, BK? Happiness. Happiness. Okay. Yay. Oh, by the way, memory cannot be the word. So, because, you know, memory <laughs> is all we have. Happiness. Okay. Um, empowerment. Empowerment. <laughs> Um, I was also thinking like authentic self. Um, I am thinking of the word time. It's what was that? Time. Time. time? Mm. Could that be a thing, or is that time in in what sense? Yeah, uh, that um, that something takes time when you yeah when you are hit and nearly as you have you have to sit out this time <laughs> everything takes time mm, that's what okay. emerged in my head it takes I, time we can't yeah. believe it takes time yeah. okay okay <laughs> all right <laughs> let's see. um now i'm gonna mix it up who is gonna be the next person Anupa! Yay! <laughs> Anupa right. time. So now you know the deal. You have to choose a letter. Okay. Uh, I choose D. D. And you have to choose two numbers. I choose 6 and 18. 6 and 18. Ooh. Okay. So I'm going to move these two into the images selected. And I'm going to make them a little bit bigger so you can see them a little better. Which one prompts a memory for you? Um, definitely the second one. This uh, one? Because, yeah, definitely the second one. Uh, more so because uh, I, um, I grew up in Greece and our house mm. was right next to the, the, the sea. So from ah. the balcony, you could see the sea and it was exactly like this, you know, with wow. the wide, wide, um, though we were living like in, uh, like in buildings, but it was a narrow road. And then it opened up onto the main road that has the sea and the sand. And it was pretty much that. So, um, yeah, I just, just remember going to the beach and walking and, you know, running around and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it it's nice to relive that uh, memory suddenly now after a busy day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. I love the fact that you can actually like walk out or like go to the balcony and see, see the sea. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what was the what was the day like in the summer holiday, like summer vacation um, that you are now off school? What, what is it like to live in by the water and um, what, what kind of activities did you do? Um, uh, well, I tried swimming, but that didn't go well. But just the <laughs> fact that you're close to the water and you're at peace. So that's one of the things that I really like doing is just sitting on the beach when I had the opportunity and just to sink my feet in. Because now with our lives being so busy, you understand the quality and the the what you call it the important importance of you know uh, just relaxing your mind you know mm. having that clarity of thought um and it was a very peaceful time you know we like you know at when you're at that age you know you don't really have many worries yeah. Uh, you know things are great and uh, you know you go the, the, the things that you like I mean now when I look back like I probably had things that I was worried about in school or you know or, or you know something I don't know maybe it was much more larger then but the context of uh, you know importance changes over time and yeah. you value that more because you know it seems much more precious so yeah. um Definitely, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, and, and the clarity of the, the image is so 
high that it just could i immediately connected the sea the sky and the and the sand so it it was like almost there like a living memory wow. so um yeah i mean i didn't have to think twice thank you um inyan do you have a question for anupa yes of course <laughs> Knowing you as a lady now, who would be with you on that beach? Um, I have been very fortunate in my life to meet people who have added a great deal. So I wouldn't say that there would be one person. You know, the relationship that I have from, let's say, people from the Wednesday Web Jam or my, you know, close friends or family, you know, the, you know, like I've been fortunate enough to have that kind of com- uh, connection with people. So if I could, I would walk with everybody, but like in separate because we all be, like there is groupism. I can't lie. So maybe I could just transport myself from one person <laughs> to the other while walking on that journey. So, uh, because it was such a beautiful moment, I wouldn't want to leave people out. I wouldn't know who to leave out. Yeah. That's why in India, we have such large gatherings, like, <laughs> it's close. <laughs> Mim, do you have a question for Anupa? Okay, so Anupa was saying large gatherings in India. I want to say, what is your biggest gathering in India that you've been Well, I have been, like, it obviously has to be a wedding. Um, I have <laughs> been to one, but my friend, she vis- went to a wedding, which had like 5,000 people and oh they had to God. hold it in a, in a stadium. Wow. So... <laughs> <laughs> you definitely didn't um, want to leave anyone out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so they went all out. Uh, wow. Yeah, so large is la- in a gathering. Yeah, I think mine... I think would have been like 1,000, 1,500 to 2,000. Wow. Oh, yeah. No. Do, you, do, you, yeah. do you know modest, everybody modest. at that wedding? <laughs> no. For weddings like this, you have to have clarity of agenda. You go there, you speak to whoever you have to speak to, and you hit the buffet. So it's all about the, the food. <laughs> and, you know, just like if you if you are a nasty person, then you comment or <laughs> gossip. <laughs> Since my agenda is a little bit more one focused. Yeah, everybody knows that. <laughs> I don't know what's happening, but I get a whole movie here in my head instead Same. of a picture. A whole movie. <laughs> All right. Jimena, do you have a question for Nupa? Yes. <clears throat> um, from being there in Greece, when, when, you, when you live there, from this environment, what do you think that it's now with you? Like, because of this experience i am like this and and i i owe it to that part of myself who was there um i think the exposure to different kinds of people experiences um and an understanding you know sense making i think that's one of the biggest lessons or you know experiences I can take with me today not only in my personal but also in work that you know you have the ability to empathize with different like scenarios you know and I think that's very important as a designer that you know when you're when you connect with a let's say a problem space or any situation you can put your your role play yourself and I think that is that is Uh, that happens when you have that kind of exposure. I'm not saying that people who don't have that exposure don't have it, but I feel for me that kind of exposure of different places, uh, like Mim would understand, when you're, when you're of a different culture, to then adapt to you know a certain scenario. And I, I think that is, um, a, as an experience, uh, I've learned and appreciated and used also. Amazing. And PK? Um, Yeah, I'd like to go back to the feeling that you had um, on the beach, like the no worries um, feeling. Uh, what do you do nowadays to experience that feeling again? Um, if I could, I would walk 
to a beach and sink my feet into the sand but that's not um not that's not possible at all times um now i either um i don't know i do a lot of um uh, you know yoga that brings me a lot of um you know i do that every morning um dance that's my personal space because it allows you to be who you are and what you are at that and so yeah i think that's definitely a place that gives me a lot of peace um yeah or you know just generally speaking to people who i'm comfortable with so that's very generic but yes dance definitely thank you wonderful so now we're going to move this one down here thank you everyone thank you. um and now what we have, have to ask is Is there any common theme between Mimp's story and Anupa's story? Childhood. Childhood. Mm. Okay, so I can put that happiness. Oh, yeah. Happiness and joy. Yeah, happiness so, and joy. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to move this one. Let me just to move, going to front. Um, this is a shared. And so we have um, a good overlap between two. Now, what else? What else can we put into Anupa's memory that we can we can remember afterwards? I would say like sense of freedom when she hears like freedom. no worries. <laughs> oh, okay, freedom. Sense of freedom. I, I thought um, you mentioned something a couple times about clarity, but like mm -hmm. by being there, you, you just have this clarity of thoughts. Um, so I'll just put clarity. All right. Now like we have exposure. three left. Exposure? Mm. Okay. Mm. Like trying new things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Experiences. <laughs> Lee can't type. Lee can't type that fast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. Now, um, I'm gonna mix it up. Okay. <laughs> 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 so you know the deal. What is the letter? Do I remember? Um, the letter F. Please. All right. F for Fika. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then Two I choose um, 12 and 17. 12 and 17. All right. Oops. Looks like a landscape painting. Yeah. Either one of them prompts a memory for you. Um, um, so slowly, you know, um, the, the feeling, not, not necessarily yeah. in a memory, but the feeling comes up with the right, uh, the okay. right one, that um, that 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 shiny. Um, I want to say shininess <laughs> mm -hmm. to the light. Sp yeah. Yeah. Um, when did you have that feeling? Yeah. Um, suddenly, I'm thinking of Paris. Um, I visited Paris, Paris for the first time when I was a kid, and then with friends again several times. And I guess it's the the water. So the the, yes. the bigger part, the 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 water is making my memory jump. Mm -hmm. The the walks we did uh, along the river. Um, mm -hmm. And also seeing the friends that I was with, and especially my my best friend um, 
from from kindergarten we, oh, wow. we went we went to paris yeah and so also the feeling of you know thick <laughs> knitted <laughs> like chewing gum friendship <laughs> comes yeah. up as, as well yeah yeah and water water also brings flashes of uh, of of ease yeah mm -hmm. feeling yeah feeling, uh, com comfortable uh, listening to the, the the sounds of water um, and when did I hear that so that brings me back to holidays in in, in China well there are <laughs> mountains <Yeah. laughs> when there are mountains there also could be water and if yeah. there's a water water is running <laughs> <laughs> so the sound of of yeah you could say rain so my thoughts are really jumping <laughs> everywhere all over the place yeah all over the place yes um yeah. so the also I, I would like to bring it back to the paris with your yes. kindergarten best friend um tell us tell us a little bit more about your like what was your kindergarten like what what, what, how did you become best friend with this person? <laughs> yeah, I have no clue. I have no clue. You could say, um, you know, if I think back when I was four or five, um, I, uh, I, the image I have is that I didn't speak a lot. Mm. You wouldn't say it today. No. But back then. <laughs> <laughs> really? Back then, I don't know. I, it felt comfortable somehow that I did not communicate a lot and I guess some um, some girls in in the class they 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 feel moved by you know a very helpless little <laughs> girl in the corner <laughs> let's you know let's embrace her let's help this little yeah. thing I know that those kind of feelings were there and for instance uh, playing playing daddy and mommy I mm. always played the child <laughs> I always, yeah, no. you know what I mean so somehow mm. how did I get myself in that role <laughs> yeah. mm. interesting thank yeah. you Mim yes I have a question so like um <clears throat> apart from your friend in, in Paris like who are you still in touch with those friends that you talked about yeah yeah, yeah. do you do you talk a lot like are you are you still as close or you know life happens yeah we we are close and that means when we meet each other uh, it's not necessary to catch up what has been behind us in time what is important is now like i talk to you guys now <laughs> <laughs> now is important and what is going on now how do you how do you feel why are you so angry <laughs> what what happened with this this is so, so the feeling of that contact is really in this moment now this is what matters and we know we will say bye later on and that is okay and you know in that way we have been together for <coughs> for more than 50 yeah for more than 50 years nearly so, wow. you know, what is this number? What is this figure? How, how strange, isn't it? For more yeah. than years. I thought my yeah. mom did these things, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anupa, do you have a question for Indian? Yes. Uh, it, it's, it's really um, interesting to see that how all of us, when we're talking about childhood, you know, we have either people or places in play, you know, in, in, in mind. Um, and I don't know when, when you, when I saw those two pictures for you, I, for some reason, I thought that yeah, you will be choosing the, the right one. I don't know why. And I was, <laughs> I wasn't uh, shocked that you chose it uh, maybe because you know, the way that you are as a person and you know, what I've seen of you, I feel that you could connect with this photo more. Mm. Um, uh, apart from uh, just, you know, apart from just, uh, you know, relating to people, uh, is there anything else that made you connect to this photo, to this image? Mm, it, it could be the clouds. 
because uh, when I was in South Africa, that, it was the first time that I saw how clouds were formed. Hmm. Yeah. Never seen that, never seen that, that somehow water is coming out of the sea and then it, it's in a curl that a, a cloud uh, get, get formed. And I see Lee Kim nodding. So it's, it's something that you can see. It's, it's, it's not like a magician up there, you know, boing, made clouds. <laughs> they, they are made really. Uh, and, and this was a, a seaside on the beach. And there was also a mountain with this steep, steep wall. So that's why it happened. So that's what yeah. it triggers when I when I look at this picture and um, somehow yeah. the clouds ask my attention. Yeah, and you know I think you know for me also why I connected to that picture because you like for me also when I I'm sure I've seen like I've seen clouds and water before, but again that the clearness in the sky mm. that you see mm. you know you actually open your eyes to see something. I think that was also the reason. Um, I probably connected to that photo because that image of exactly a cloud is for me also was very vivid and still is uh, very vivid. Interesting. All right, Jimena, do you have a question for our storyteller? Oh, we cannot hear you. You're not on mute, but we cannot hear you. Hello. hello. There you go. Oh, hello. Yes. Yay. Perfect. Thank you. So you mentioned at the beginning that you had been there several times in Paris, right? So um, I wonder what, why was several, you know, like what was this connection or feeling that made you go there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it, at the very first time with my, my father and mother and grandmother, that could be the, the excitement of a new place. There's a new place over there, really big. We've heard a lot about it, and it's time to go and explore ourselves. And um, uh, I think that was a big attraction. And the second time with friends, it, it could be um, a, a place where you can hide. <laughs> so, so it's totally okay to, uh, to go incognito, is that the word? You can disappear yeah. in the city. <clears throat> Isn't that nice? You can, you are on this world, but you also can disappear and nobody knows unless you take yeah. your best friend. So <laughs> it's another a different type of attraction, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, we only have like 30 seconds left. So <laughs> <laughs> time flies. Let's, let's find out uh, any, any common themes between childhood. Childhood, okay. Mm. Happiness. Yeah. Childhood. Yeah. Happiness. Yeah. Um, freedom again. Yeah, I freedom. think freedom because we're like okay. incognito, being able to mm. like, yeah. Where is freedom? Yes. Sense, oh, sense of freedom, yes. yes. All right. We and the experience first. of water being there, like nature. Feel uh -huh. feeling the sound of water. Uh huh. Let me just yeah, si yeah. similarity of experiences. Because mm. <clears throat> you know, Anupa, you also mentioned that now, like you like to put your feet on the in the in the water, feeling of that um, thing of water came out. Okay, all right. <laughs> we did well. We didn't get to pick in Jimena, but <laughs> next time. <laughs> Maybe in backstage. <laughs> yeah, in the backstage, yes. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, I think Very people fun. will be coming back. Yes. To the main room. Um, Welcome back, everybody. All right. Did you have enough time? <laughs> Hopefully you did. We we only got to hear three people's stories. Um, so why did we play this game, and what did we get from playing this game? Oftentimes, what I hear is, I didn't know that I would learn about that person that deeply in such a short period of time. And I think one thing comes in is a storyteller is willing to share the story. 
However, what comes out deeper is listener is more curious to learn more about the storyteller. So the beginning story might be just a, a, a little bit of a prompt to what comes after, but as a person digs into the story and then the story tells more story and the story tells more story, and then you realize that actually there are more than the first part of the story that's being told in that person's story, right? Hopefully you felt that. Um, and so I would like to invite all the facilitators to share their, um, their theme board and kind of give us uh, what happened in that room. So let's start uh, with uh, Colin. <laughs> Colin is like, <laughs> Wow, we heard some amazing stories. No, we, um, I think one, th one thing came through was this timeline, these stories emerge and it's a question of they pop up, they're prompted by this visual and it may have gone years since the last time that story was in your consciousness. It, it, you know, it just comes out of nowhere. Um, so we had a couple Thank of themes. You. The one theme was around horses and horse riding, which, oh, there, you've got that there. <laughs> um, there was a, a very definite theme around horses, obviously from the first image. The second image provoked um, a, a the one below with horses. It was more of an abstract memory around a mountain, a mountain uh, um, a visit to a mountain uh, range, which then led on to another story. So <laughs> these stories uh, start sort of uh, um, making way for new, other stories to emerge and kind of uh, creep up to the surface as a uh, Yun Yen would, uh, and, and I like to say, percolate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and, thank you. Yeah, and and then there was uh, just this 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 uh, sense of seasons and moments. Um, vacation was a strong one as well that came up. Um, okay. Yeah, and and the, and one more thing to mention was just this the sense of um, regret and for not learning to play an instrument when when we're young, and <laughs> sense of like opportunity to play and the and. Uh, Parents say, you're going to regret this one day. And then sure enough, you become an adult and you regret it. So that was quite powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Dina and I'm going to share the screen. And I'm surprised to see the same painting was chosen. <laughs> yeah, so we had a really lovely little collection of, of stories that all centered around. And it's funny because actually this wasn't a theme that came up, but all of the stories that were told centered around childhood. Um, so there was really, uh, a nice, um, it was beautiful just to kind of see the memories unfold, you know, that, that when you start with these images, it's really something very kind of a, a, a moment in time and emotion, um, uh, a lot of like innocence and fun and joy and community. Um, actually, ironically with the musical instrument thing, we had a story that was about somebody who, uh, really just fell in love with the musical instrument and actually now has played like I think the total list came to six or seven different instruments over the course of her life <laughs> um so uh so yeah just uh you know discovery and connection and fun um yeah. in these these sort of innocent moments of childhood um and the the family and community um that is that surrounds you in those moments thank you um, it's interesting as I was looking at that old man and old woman sitting down and the theme was adventure. I'm like, how did that become? <laughs> so actually this, the, the, the thing in that image that sparked the story was the cat. There's a ah! cat behind the old people. Um, and that was the thing that sparked the, the story. So <laughs> yeah. the, the old people actually had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, Misha? Misha, are you here? I think you're on mute, Misha. I am here. I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Thank you for your patience. Um, that's so weird because uh, totally two dif totally different pictures, as you can see, but a lot in common with Colin's group and also Dina's group. Um, seasons, instruments, and emotions. It's weird. Musical instruments really coming through. Um, so if you look at the, the little post-its in the green that are, I've, I've put in capital letters, these are the, the themes that we thought were overlapping for each of the stories, the two stories that we got. So looking at emotions and how we're um, impacted by experiences that happen to us, really important relationships that we have, uh, often from a very young age, that we experience the world through um, the sense, um, one of, of sound for, for music and then of smell. Mm -hmm. So the smell of tomato plant leaves. <laughs> And that that can remind you of something that happened a long time ago. And seasons, again, the different seasons that we go through throughout the year uh, and in our life as well. So that's Thank me. you. You're yeah, welcome. Wonderful. You're welcome. Andrew? Uh, yes. I'll share your board. Um... Uh, so I think our stories were more connected towards romanticizing country life, <laughs> cultural pride in nature. Uh, we learned a lot about a little bit of art history from <laughs> Tudor. So I'm a little bit more familiar with uh, Romanian art styles and how they're influenced. Um, also learned a lot about um, more of like how something has changed over time from Brett and Diana's story of old barns being used for tobacco, being used for more weddings to parties, wow. uh, which is a little bit different from what they were originally used for. So we did more transformation community. And then we had a story from, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to get the name, Offrey, uh, regarding more of like nostalgia in my mind and maybe in seeing her smile a lot for where she would be sharing a story of uh, her husband playing jazz music anywhere mm -hmm. he goes and dancing with her family. It seems like a very nostalgic, maybe family idea. Yeah, thank you. All right, and I think Caitlin? Yes, perfect. Um, do you want me to share my screen? Yeah. Maybe? Okay, great. Okay, perfect. So um, yeah, I really enjoyed my team, Sarah Jane, um, Birgit, and Cassie. And so we kind of found um, that the majority um, of the themes here was traveling and culture. Um, Sarah Jane used to live in Czech Republic. Um, Birgit loves art, so she travels around Europe and goes to different museums. And Cassie um, visits, when she was younger, used to visit her, um, her family and still does in the Philippines. So um, we talked a lot about that and just reflection and um, looking at different art pieces and, and finding joy in that and um, seeing family and, and um, and um, just reflecting on that. So that was um, definitely yeah. some common themes that we found and, and it was, yeah, a lovely group. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Sarah? Yes, yeah, so my group was Carrie and Danny, Peter and Serena. And we went from a cricket floor potato raised in an apartment in Montreal, to Indian countryside, to prayers, connections with God, but also the religious structures and norms, and ended with books in Barnes & Noble. <laughs> so I think we traveled all the way, and the themes that were about time, about the journey, and the fact that we're all human. Oh, I love that here. Um, future is today, and the journey. Yeah, we're all human. Um, that's that's uh, something that I can just hold on to as <laughs> my motto. Future is today. Don't look for it. It's right here. <laughs> so yeah, thank you everyone. Um, and as we are closing today's Wednesday Web Jam, design thinking. The core of design thinking, as we all know, is empathy is also set, called human-centered design for a reason. So as we are moving on to our days and our month, if we can find a way to listen to each other's story, maybe also your own story that you haven't visited for a long time, 
and become one of storytellers, one of the story listeners, and one of the story inquirers, um, I think we will be a better human um, as a collective beings. So thank you so much for being here and sharing your stories. As I said in the beginning, if you would like to play this game and you want to have this board, um, you can reach out to me. Um, I'm going to just put my email address uh, <laughs> and, and I'll create one for you. So um, I think that concludes today's Wednesday Web Jam. We are five minutes ahead of the time, but I hope you all enjoyed today's session. And thank you so much for all the facilitators um, for being here, facilitating the storytelling and listening. I'm sure we couldn't have done this without all of you. Thank you so much. Can I? Can we have a round of applause for Lee Kim, uh, Dina, Colin, Sarah, uh, Andrew, Caitlin, and Misha, please? Thank you so much. I think this is like the most facilities we had on Wednesday Web Jam as well. <laughs> Guinness Book of Record. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, broke a record. <laughs> so for the next session, I'd like you to be with us again to play another game. So for this session, we have Sarah Jane and she is here as well. So Sarah Jane, would you like to say a few words? Yes, I would be delighted. Uh, I'm really honored to follow Lee Kim, who I see as the empath expert and one of my uh, gurus in design thinking. Uh, Lee helped me uh, design PuzzleKind, which is the platform that Ronnie McNeil and I will be introducing you to next week. We create a public jigsaw puzzle parlor for you to enter and enjoy. And I'm hopeful that you all participate. And uh, Young Yan has been working tirelessly to make this tech miracle manifest. So I wanna give her special props as well. You are so welcome. And um, uh, I would like you to look at my screen for just a few seconds because um, I can show you what is happening <laughs> if I get my screen. So right here go away this screen okay so there i am and you know we are going to do things like this and you see this is a, this is a puzzle asked to be solved and mm. i cannot do it myself <laughs> cliffhanger come back next time <laughs> wednesday it is <laughs> amazing Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so as usual, one second. Yes, please tune in to uh, the next session. Uh, and uh, if you have registered for our emails on our mailing list, you will get the register link. Or if you follow us on LinkedIn or Facebook, Instagram, all of that, we also post our link there as well. And before we close, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to the curators team. If you have any uh, future ideas for a WWJ session, please share uh, the topic. And um, if you go to uh, bit.ly WWJ ideas, you can submit your ideas um, and we would like to see your ideas. And please follow us on social media, all of that stuff. And uh, these are our crew, lovely crew members. Some of them are not here, but some of them who are here, thank you for being with us. Thank you for helping us co-organize. And please also, uh, if you'd like to help us out, uh, please donate us to uh, our Kofi, chip in, buy us a coffee. Uh, this is a, uh, we do this for free and uh, we have some costs to cover, such as MailChimp, um, as well as also like the website and uh, Zoom, everything. So um, that would really help us out. And I will go into the backstage in a second. So I'm going to stop sharing and ask all of us to wave goodbye to YouTube. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Or stay. <laughs>